Hey guys and welcome back. So once again we're talking about uh, what database should we choose for our Zabbix, uh, Zabbix server or even a Zabbix proxy. Uh, we talked uh, previously about this topic and um, you can find it in the YouTube, it's, it's not hidden anywhere but uh, time flies and the new technologies come in so the question remains like which database engine is the best for my Zabbix server and uh, currently if we're talking about what is supported it's pretty simple so um, nothing actually has changed we still do support Oracle database uh, MySQL any MySQL forks as example MariaDB um and postgres and postgres database yes uh, one database engine actually is gone it's ibm db2 uh, which is not supported since the version 2.0 so basically we have a three uh big players which is oracle mysql and a postgres so then the question comes like uh First of all, the considerations like why are we uh, asking this question? Do we want to, let's say, gain the best out of the performance or are we tied to some of our company policies? Because if we're talking about a company policies, as example, uh, let's say you have an Oracle, uh, full Oracle licenses in your company with the Oracle DBAs in all of your production uh, databases um, outside of the Zabbix are going with a Oracle. I believe uh, there's no room for a question. So if you have everything based on a Oracle, why should you choose something else for, um, for a Zabbix? Then definitely stick with a Oracle. If the question is only regards the performance, uh, then I get, I think I really think I really do that uh, you are overthinking a lot because uh, let me actually open uh, yeah the stuff that I like like the drawing so let's say if we have uh, I'll make it like this uh, Postgres then my SQL yeah so we already specified the Oracle um, let's say if we are thinking only about a performance so we want to use uh, we want to get the best outside of our Zabbix and we don't want the database be the uh, limiting factor in in this performance consideration so let's say we talk about uh, default settings right default configuration files I again mentioned this many times in the patreon in some other videos you need to tune your database but if we're talking about uh, a default configuration file my strong opinion is that let's say the performance you would get I will even uh, move it like fill with a solid color and also same yeah like this uh, would be exactly the same for the Postgres and for the MySQL. So basically, like if you're thinking only about a performance, there's no difference. If you're using the same configuration files, if you have a same hardware on both a Postgres and a MySQL, and let's say if you go to the monitoring hosts, then find your Zabbix server, open graphs, and here select Zabbix server performance, if in this graph this value last you don't see something around like let's say 30,000 plus I'm talking about the thousands three zero or four zero five zero thousands then you really should not worry about uh, which database should I choose uh, for a best performance if you have a MySQL database and you're running around 500 new values per seconds and you're having a performance issues trust me it's not uh, it's not a database engine fault it uh, most likely is uh, the fault of your database configuration file which is not optimized or maybe your hardware or some other Zabbix configuration is uh, not uh, by the best practices so if we if we know that there's no performance considerations let's think about the complexity and uh, I already mentioned this uh, again a couple of times in some other videos so if we talk about a complexity uh, of uh, operating and uh, 
let's say configuration tuning uh, creating replications and all of that stuff i personally think that a postgres is uh, much more complicated simply because one reason uh, there is less information about Postgres than there is uh, about MySQL. So once again, if you're not that experienced, you will have, uh, you will need much less time to find some information about a MySQL database rather than about a Postgres. And then let's think about those uh, more complicated setups. So when you uh, want to have a uh, high availability setups with a uh, master master replications, um, server in a cluster, pr proxies in a cluster in the front end, then again, my personal opinion is that uh, configuring such thing in a Postgres will again be way more complicated than it is on a MySQL right so there we go like uh, we get a same performance with a postgres and a mysql but uh, postgres is uh, more complicated to configure and on the postgres it's take, it takes more effort to uh, configure high availability and replication but what else comes uh, to the play is uh, timescale database so timescale db let me put it a bit more prettier. There we go. Uh, Timescale DB is extension to the Postgres database. So you can use a Zabbix server with a Timescale DB, but don't think about a Timescale DB as independent engine. So it's basically a plugin uh, which goes on top of your Postgres. And this plugin will give you two major improvements, which is, first of all, a native partitioning and we're gonna touch this in a couple of minutes so yeah let's put it like here native partitioning and uh, compression compression of history tables so if we're talking about a native partitioning uh, there is internal process in the Zabbix uh, I can bring it here in uh, not here here on top of my screen and I have a Zabbix server here up and running. So, PS crab housekeeper. You see this uh, housekeeper idle for 30 minutes just because I just started my Zabbix server. And this process has only one task it is responsible to uh, clean uh, our Zabbix server database from all information that is not relevant anymore so outdated uh, history outdated events that we don't want to keep anymore and uh, for housekeeper the problem with a housekeeper is that it is not able to process huge databases so when your database grows to around 500 gigs uh, simply because you have a very let's say a lot of the hosts a lot of items and you are keeping the history for multiple years housekeeper will not be able to keep with all of that data and it become very, it will become very slow so the most common solution for that is to uh, let's say drop the housekeeper stop using it and instead configure the partitioning on the databases on the database level which will partition your history tables on a per day basis and trends per month that's like a typical best practice and uh, let's say if we're talking about uh, oracle we're actually will get this uh, outside of our conversation because I've mentioned it in the beginning I personally think that you should choose Oracle only if your company policies are basically forcing you to do that and you do have a DBA so in that case you should not you should not have any questions about it but if we're talking about a MySQL like you can configure a MySQL uh, with a partitioning but again it's uh, not like a built a built-in partitioning support inside as Zabbix. there's no built-in partitioning support in a mysql you have to create your own solution uh, which basically means that you have to write your own custom script or other option is um, mysql procedures 
to basically execute a partitioning uh, like daily and partition or delete all the partitions that are older than you want to keep. Or you can just use uh, basically a community made script from the zabbix.org. You can also find a video in my channel about the partitioning and how to do that. But again, it takes some time and uh, it is very old solution. There are some issues with a new database engine starting with a MySQL 8. So basically it's a bit of the overhead, right? You, you need to somehow configure it. If you don't know how to do that, it's again a problem, then you need to maintain it. So yeah, uh, with a Postgres, again, it has a native partitioning, which is super cool. So color this, uh, I don't know how to make it transparent, no fill. So native partitioning, all you have to do is uh, just use a timescale DB. That's the first, of course, thing number one. So when you have a timescale DB set up, all you need to do is in the front and choose for how many days uh, you will be keeping the partitions of the history and the trends. That's it. Everything else will be managed by the Zabbix server itself. You don't have to write any custom scripts. You don't have to write any uh, database procedures. Uh, you don't need to shuttle any cron jobs to execute it or something like that. Everything will happen natively. And a second thing is compression, which again is a huge thing. So we talked about uh, housekeeper problems that are coming uh, to the play when our database grows to like 500 gigs plus but 500 gigs it's uh, it's not the biggest you can get like depending on your settings how long do you want to keep the history how many items you have you might be um, you might be having a database for like multiple terabytes and uh, First of all, it is causing, again, performance regression simply because your database is super big. On the second hand, it is also, it also costs you a lot because like multiple terabytes of the hard drives. And uh, if you have multiple terabytes of the database, then most likely you are like uh, doing a lot of things to keep up with the performance. And most likely those are SSD drives. So those cost a lot. And uh, yeah, to avoid those expenses, there is an option to use a timescale DB compression on your history tables, which again is absolutely native functionality. And uh, compression, like the only limitation, limitation with the compression functionality is that it can be applied on the tables. Um, so basically when you apply it on a table, there is no way to edit the entry or insert something new in that compressed period, but uh, it's not even the case with a Zabbix history. So if we received some sort of, of the history a week ago and we are just keeping it for the visualization, like that's it, we won't be making any changes to it. We won't be inserting any new data uh, a week ago or, or changing the data for that period. So it's therefore staying and only for the visualization. That's why um, we are able to use a native compression support. And again, no need for custom scripts, no need for any procedures, customizations, complex solutions. This comes out of the box with the timescale DB. So in the result, what we get is, uh, yes, my SQL is uh, much easier uh, for, let's say, Again, my personal opinion for installations like less than 1000 or 2000 NVPS. So number of processed values per second. You can check this in a monitoring hosts, find your Zabbix server host and check Zabbix server performance. So if you have like 100, 200, 3, 4, 5, maybe even 1000, but all the performance is fine, then you don't really need to worry about all of this thing. Like it's not that important for you. So if you have a standalone installation, you don't have a, a high availability and your your server is running on 500 and VPS, trust me, you will be absolutely fine with uh, this setup, 
running simple MySQL, uh, googling online how to tune your MySQL database, and filling in some uh, couple of tuning parameters in your MyCNF. And as long as you have uh, proper hardware, like um, at least, let's say, 8 gigs of the memory uh, on the database server, and you actually utilize this memory in inodb buffer pool size, and you have a good disks that are not overloaded with some other softwares, you'll be absolutely fine. If on the other hand, you are running, let's say thousand, two thousands, maybe you're aiming to double your uh, amount of the host that you're monitoring. So you're expecting to get like 5,000 in VPS. Then I would start to look at this solution, like native partitioning, super easy. Native compression will save you a lot of the disk space. Um, Timescale DB, which is also supported out of the box. So in that case, I would look on the side of the Postgres with timescale DB extension and all the goodies. But uh, again, very important thing, like if you already have a Zabbix up and running, let's say for a month or a year or five years, and you're on a MySQL and then uh, everything is good, like you don't have any performance issues and you watch this video and you hear how, how I say that the Postgres is super cool. No, it doesn't mean that you have to migrate as long as your performance is very uh, optimal there's really no reason to upgrade and even if your performance is not at the best thinking that you have a performance problems only because the database engine that you're running is a number one mistake so you can run mysql or mariadb database and achieve 100 thousand number of processed values per second which is huge and uh, well sorry but i doubt that somebody who is watching actually have a production with uh, 100k plus new values per second if you do um, kick me in the comments i would uh, love to hear more about your instance um, again like same on a Postgres. If you're running a Postgres and you have uh, 500 new values per second and you're hitting a performance issues, no, it is not because you're using a Postgres database engine. It may be because your Postgres database engine is not optimized. It may be because of the bad hardware, um, low memory on the server, slow disks, uh, misconfigured Zabbix servers, slow communication between the Zabbix server and the database if those are remote. Uh, hosts, but it's definitely not because of the choice of the engine. Right, so I was actually thinking that this video will be sort of 10 minutes, but I guess this will be another 120 plus minute video. So I hope this helps. Like, uh, to sum it up, like if I would be installing a fresh installation in uh, some sort of the company for the production, thinking to scale in uh, future and have like a lot of the hosts, a lot of the items, new values per second, from the scratch, I would probably start with uh, um, with a Postgres and a Timescale DB, simply because of first of all compression and second thing native partitioning. Yes, all the other things are more complicated with the MySQL, but this partitioning and compression, that's big. Uh, if I would be already running a MySQL on my existing instance, then I would not change anything. I would not uh, throw myself around like all other supported database engines like Oracle and Postgres by simply hoping that uh, switching the database engine would somehow solve my potential performance problems because it's definitely not the case, trust me. Like if, if you have some issues, then you need to look elsewhere, not in the changing database engine. Once again, thank you all for watching. You can leave uh, your feedback or you can also write your size, the size of your Zabbix server, the number of persistent values per second in the comments. Uh, I guess it will be interesting for all of us to hear like uh, how big or small are your instances outside there. So thank you once again for watching the videos and uh, see you next time. Goodbye.